was the one that uh, invented what do they call it? Can we go into a dark subject now, like yeah. a porn? <laughs> Talk to <laughs> the method. What's the method? Oh, are we going? Ah. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. It's part three, isn't it? Okay, this is part three of our introduction and look at using a compressor and an airbrush. My name's Mike John and we're here at War Game Store in Brimstage. So John is going to prime some of these Empress miniature modern warfare figures using Vallejo Surface Primer. Um, so there you go John, show us how you set up the, uh, the paint okay. etc and get going. Right, first of all, before you set the paint up, we need to make sure our models are primed and prepped. And there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can hold the model in your hands. There's a couple of simple ways. With the use of a paint pot and a bit of blue tack, and stick it to a pot or an old paint pot. I find the P3 one's quite useful because it's got something decent to hold on to. Or you can use anything. Another way you can do it is using a little tongue depressor. And a bit of blue sack, I'm sticking to tongue depressor so it's a bit easier for you to hold. You're not going to touch the models and you can move them around a bit easier. Okay. What are you using today, John? Is it uh, the Vallejo Surface Primer? What I'm going to use today it's the Vallejo Surface Primer. It comes in a multitude of colours. As with any models, you need to prime them. What people are used to using spray paint, whether it's the Games Workshop stuff or the Army Painter or prime colours but before you paint a model you need to obviously prime them first of all so that the actual acrylic paint will adhere to the surface. So what I'm going to do, I've got my surface primer to all game store stocks. All thing we're going to need to do give it a good shake first of all to mix it about in case any parts inside are separated. And what I'm going to do is add a few drops into the, the well, the airbrush. I'm going to add about 10 drops or so. And this is one of the beauties of using the airbrush. You're looking at using just a few drops to paint. Well, we're going to paint half a dozen models here. Compare that to the cost of a spray can and how quickly you use up a spray can. Yeah, it's a fantastic way. Obviously, you saw we put the paint in there. The main benefit is I've only put in what I actually need. Okay, so I've got the paint in there now. I've already turned the airbrush on. I've set the PSI up, so I need to test and adjust. Because obviously if you're new to using the airbrush, first thing you need to do is get used to the spray and how it comes out. I've got a piece of paper here so I'm going to demonstrate. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to adjust the little back, adjust to there because it's a dual action airbrush. What this part controls, like I said in the previous videos, is the needle inside. So now I've adjusted it, what I'm going to do on this piece of paper first of all, I'm just going to test, make sure the paint comes out. You might need to adjust it slightly. That's just with the needle slightly adjusted. You can see the paint there, it's quite light actually. But you can see that there, that's only come out small parts. So I'm just going to open up that screw slightly a bit more. And this allows more paint to come out. Small paint's come out there, you can see bigger surface area. And if it did open it up even more, again, it's going to allow more, even more paint to come out. So again, depending on how much you open up the screw at the back and how much paint is going to come out. If you close it right up, you can actually make or do quite fine lines with it. But again, it is getting used to. You can see there the fine lines. One thing you've got to get used to is where the actual paint comes out. So you've got to remember it comes from the edge of the tip there towards the model. Okay, so. I think I've got that set up now, I'm just going to test it again. That's a nice steady flow. I've already got a model based here, so I'm simply going to do now is hold the model about six inches away from the airbrush and a nice steady flow. All I'm going to simply do, the thing to remember is you're going to move the airbrush and the model, okay, in conjunction with themselves. Nine times out of ten, you'll have to move the model. So all I'm simply doing now. Nice steady coat. 
try not to get too close. You can tell when you're getting too close because you'll see the paint start to pull in all the recesses. So you're about three centimetres, three or four centimetres, John. About that, yeah. Okay, and that's that model prime. So that was a, a few seconds, 10, 20 seconds. Very, very little mess. There's no smell. You there's know, no it's, smell at all. You, you can't really see it. Clean. No, you, there's no vapour in the air. There's no smell. So only people that struggle with asthma or any problems like that, you're not going to have a massive problem with it. In fact, you're not going to have any problem at no. all. And again, if I wanted to go on to the next ones, all I simply do, same distance again. Making sure I don't stay in one area for too long. Just going to move them around to the box. One thing you will have to do, so obviously as you're spraying, just remember any of the nooks and crannies, tilt the model slightly, just to get into those nooks and crannies, so under arms, any back of the wagon areas, and that's those three models primed. It's as simple as that, they are really simple quite easy to yeah. use. I've put ten drops in there, I've still got probably about three or four drops left in there, and I've just primed four models. Excellent, excellent. Simple as that. Right, well, on our final video, we're going to uh, look at disassembling the equipment, cleaning the airbrush, and looking at maybe some of the benefits of using an airbrush over spray cans and, uh, and hand painting.